Hi, Rudd Laughlin, United States Navy Captain, retired. Joined the Navy in 1968, retired in 1999. I'm a Naval Flight Officer. While I was in the Navy, I got a chance to travel to 60 countries in the world. There's not many people that can say, join the Navy and see the world, but that's what I did. I'm here tonight, November 10th, 2015, the 240th, that's 240, birthday party of the United States Marine Corps. We're at Churchill's here in Sugar Land, and this is the sixth year in a row that this birthday party has been celebrated here. Marine Veterans Riding Association. Good Joe started it. There you go. Yes, indeed. So I just want to add this uh, about Cujo. Uh, last year, I uh, basically lost my best friend from the Marine Corps. He shot himself, and uh, he taught me everything I knew. And I was uh, very honored to ride with the uh, club a few years ago, and I met Cujo, being an amazing guy, an amazing human being, great friend, and overall, not just a great Marine. And he literally, when I called him the day after he, I found out about my friend, that he killed himself, without even knowing anything about who my friend was, he drove all the way to Dallas that same day, just showed up, to the funeral for a few minutes, shaked everybody's hand, and went all the way back to Houston. And I just want to point that out because he's an amazing, amazing human being. Perfect. Sergeant Andrew Kiefer, United States Marine Corps. Yes, sir. And how long have you been in the Marines? I, I, I served in the Marine Corps for four years, about from 03 to 07. Okay, and what do you do now? Nowadays, I dedicate myself to oil and gas. So I live here in Houston, so. And why did you join the Marine Corps? Because uh, based, based on my father's experience and his life, he was my hero always, and I always looked up to him. So I thought where he started in the Marine Corps when he was 17, so I said I want to do that. And the first time I saw his dress blues, even in his funeral, uh, the first time I saw Marines wearing dress blues when I was like five, I said I want to be that guy. So. And what was, your, um, what was your most enjoyable time in the Marine Corps? Uh, having a meaning in life and serving the people that can help themselves. If you had to give advice to a 17-year-old today about the United States Marines, what would you tell them? Be ready, be sure, but put 100% into it and you'll get what you put into it. So basically, I mean, forget about the media, forget about everything, and do what's in your heart. If you really want to be a Marine or any other branch, you know, go for it and you'll achieve big things. Our next group is going to be the Marine Moms. Okay, everybody knows they're back there, but if you want to step up here, you can get some pictures taken. And this is another thing that's come about since David Swain let us use this for the Marine Corps birthday party. Not many people knew there was a Marine Mom organization out there, which has been tremendously helpful for when their daughters or sons are deployed. Now they've got somebody they can talk to, get answers from. They're not isolated. And they put all the work they do is on their extra time. That's why this is a fundraiser for them. They buy supplies and pack it up and ship it to veterans all over in combat areas. And that's not just Marines, other ones too. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is Tina Gorsi and all of these ladies. Would you like to say something, Tina? Thank you so much to David Swain again for doing such an awesome job again this year. Of course, to our great friend, R.J., and happy 240th birthday to our Marines. So give it up for the J.R.T. Arena Detachment. That detachment was named after a young Marine that was killed in action. So, you know, what this is really all about is giving back. 
This group does a lot of giving back, scholarships, going out, helping with fundraisers. And so, you know what, kind of maybe that's what helps some veterans keep their sanity is a sense of belonging and giving. Am I right? This is the owner, in case new people are here, David Swain, the bloody Brit that is named after Churchill's. Good evening, everybody. I'm just letting you know that um, uh, the barbecue was donated by um, Cisco and um, Restaurant Depot and a lot of our friends of the, the Iron Order Motorcycle Club. Our, our motorcycle club is a law-abiding motorcycle club. We have a lot of uh, military. Um, is Ramjet here? Ramjet, where are you? Ramjet is a recruiter. He's an army recruiter, but he's hiding away. He's very shy. Um, I'm former British Army. He's a, a, a ex, ex Army as well, and uh, we support all military um, functions. We actually ride with the Patriot Guard. In fact, uh, a couple of three years ago, we um, was at Ellington uh, Field when a bunch of uh, troops came back from Iraq, and we were was the uh, the flag bearers for them when they came home. And it was actually, even though I'm British, it was actually a very proud moment for me. And I, I thank for that. And this, this night for me is actually the, th the, the day I look forward to, except the next day when I can recover, because I've been here for since 5.30 this morning barbecuing. And I would like everybody here to please, please put their hands together to my friend Woody. He, he did all the barbecuing and I, I mean, wasn't the food great today? I mean, uh, and I was supervising, so anyway, so, and that's what we do. We do with the charities. Uh, one of our charities, we support Camp Hope over there. I've been down to Camp Hope. It's a wonderful support. Uh, it's a wonderful support for everybody. And also, we support uh, Kids Unlimited. That's another charity we do. We have three chapters in Houston. So if you ever see us around, we're not bad people. We are good people, okay? And I love the American military. And God bless America. And. God save the Queen. Hi, Red O'Loughlin here, a retired Navy captain. I'm here with uh, Frank Torres. Army? Army, Lieutenant Colonel. Army, Lieutenant Colonel. I'm the commander of KDVFW Post 9182 out here in Katy, Texas. I'm here to support my Marine brethren in celebrating their 240th anniversary and birthday. Hoorah! That's the way it should be. 240 years, what does that mean to you? Well, I've been in the military 38 years, so... It means a long time. <laughs> yeah, uh, 31 years for me. I can imagine 38 years. If we broke that down into 240, that's a pretty significant fraction. It, it, it is a chunk. Of, you're exactly right. What was the most impressive thing? What was the most impressive thing you saw tonight? And that would be the World War II veteran. Um, it's a generation that we're losing. In fact, on my post, we lost two World War II veterans last month and another two month before, so I think we're down to eight in our, in our VFW post, and we treasure them every day. How many, the, uh, how many World War II veterans do you have now? I do believe we're down to about eight now in our post, and they're all active, they show up. And where have you been in the world in 38 years in the Army? Everywhere, I started out as enlisted, then I went to the dark side and became an officer. Um, spent time in Korea, not in the war, but actually in Korea. Uh, recently I've been mobilized and deployed out to the Near East, different places at the whim of the Army. They said, we have places for you to go, so I went. Annyeonghaseyo. Yeah, annyeonghaseyo. I used to be a Korean linguist. Kamsamida. Yeah, chambaneo. You're a Lieutenant Colonel now, so you have how many more years possibly to remain in the service? I'm planning to retire next year. Fantastic. I wish you the best. Well, thank you very much. Well, I see you here next year. I hope so. Hi, Red O'Loughlin again, U.S. Navy uh, Captain Retired. I'm here with retired Sergeant Lanny Martinson. Lanny has a very interesting story. I was awarded the Purple Heart in 68. You don't need three Purple Hearts. No, I got a leg blown off with one, so that's enough. Okay. But if you don't mind, could you just kind of tell me a little bit about that event? Uh, we were out on a patrol at Quezon, uh, came off a of hill 861, and uh, on the way back we got hung up in a minefield, and 
That was the end of the career. So you found the mine. We found the mines. And then how long did it take you to actually be evac'd out of there? Uh, hard to tell when you're in the condition I was in, but, okay, but, but I you, would guess close to an hour. Okay, but you ended up on a LPH or some kind of... Uh, yeah, they uh, medevaced me down to Da Nang first, uh, got me stabilized there, then uh, choppered me out to the uh, U USS Valley Forge, and they uh, performed the first amputation uh, the next day. And from there, I don't recall this, but uh, I ended up in Guam, the Naval Hospital there. And NAS Aganya. Right, and they did a second amputation there. And then you ended up in Hawaii? No, I went to Oakland Naval Hospital. So straight from, from Guam? You didn't even get to... We landed in Hawaii, and uh, that's when the general gave me my Purple Heart, and we went to California from there. If you had to say somebody, a 17-year-old today, join the Marine Corps, this will really improve your work, whatever. I, th I think it, uh, discipline is probably the big thing. Uh, when I got out, I never thought I'd fit in with my old school buddies because they seemed like a bunch of little kids to me, you know. And You I, grew up in a hurry. Yeah, I did. I did. Hold them up for me. Hold them up for me. Hold them up for me. Y'all couldn't be quiet a minute ago. Now y'all want to be quiet. Raise them up. This is why we're raising them for the ones who couldn't be here tonight, who gave the ultimate sacrifice and could not celebrate this 240th with us. Ura? Ura! All right. I'm so honored to be here, man. I, I, my heart is so full right now to be among so many warriors. So many warriors. We've got, we got Marines here with three Purple Hearts. I mean, Purple Heart recipients. We've got Marines that lost limbs here. We've got service members that are struggling, struggling to uh, deal with these little damn demons whispering in our ears, yeah? And I tell you what, I'm gonna stand here and tell you something. I know we're in a bar, and in just a little bit, we're gonna get a real crunk and rowdy in here because we're jarheads and that's how we do it, right? But for right now, please, just give me your ears for one second. For one second, give me your ears, and I just wanna touch on something. I am blessed by the grace of God to be standing here allowed to be talking to you tonight. Two years ago, last month, three gangbangers shot me up in the face and the chest while I was on a traffic stop. But you know what they didn't know? Marines are hard to fucking kill. I am still here. And I want to stand up here and I want to tell you something. The hardest part was taking those shots. And for all you other warfighters in this room, did this, this, okay. For all you other warfighters in this room, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. It's the fight after the fight. So I'm here because I want to say to you this. You push through, you don't stay in that foxhole. It's okay to have bad days, just don't unpack and stay there. Right? We take care of one another. We are a brotherhood, not just Marines, but all of us. Every last service member, every last veteran, every mother who gave birth to a warrior that serves today, every wife or husband who loves a service member and sacrificed so they could serve us, serve this country, we are the true American heroes. And what I say to you tonight is, it takes more courage to reach out, it takes more courage to stand up. Get up, get up, raise a hand to one another and pull each other forward. You go, I go, you go, I go. And right now, I want to give a toast. I want to give a toast to every last veteran, every last brother or sister in here who's fighting those demons as they whisper in our ears. We whisper back. We whisper back. We stand strong together because we're a brotherhood. You go, I go. Let's raise a toast to every last service member that served. I love you guys. I fight with you. You are not alone. You go, I go. Semper Fi! Hi, Red O'Laughlin, retired Navy captain. I'm here with the woman Marine and policewoman. That's right. And which uh, police department? I work for the Meadows Place Police Department. And how long have you been a policewoman? Oh, I started my law enforcement career in the Marine Corps as a uh, military police officer. So I've been policing for uh, many moons and uh, many pounds ago. 
And how long were you in the Marines? I served from 1991 to 1998. And what was the hardest duty station you were at? Uh, I would say the hardest duty station was probably when I was trying to learn how to be a police officer and a Marine. So between the two, it had to be Paris Island boot camp. Beautiful downtown Paris Island. Beautiful. So pretty. Beaufort, South Carolina. Paris Island. Paris Island. And with your training in the Marine Corps, did you think you would be a police person, when, police woman when you got out? I did. I did. I, there was never a time that I ever wanted to do anything else. Uh, Marine Corps taught me how to be a Marine. Marine Corps taught me how to be a police officer. And it was just a natural transition to bleed over into civilian policing. I'll tell you another thing you're very natural at, and that's public speaking. Ah. I was really and truly impressed with your keynote address tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. You, you have a natural talent for getting people inspired by I'll the... I'll tell you what, I just open my heart up and I just speak from my heart. That's all I know how to do. And uh, as, long as, I can as long as I can keep inspiring people and empowering people, I'm going to keep doing that. And you did that very well. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Captain. How many times did it take to get a final one? Yeah, I, you know, it just, I just, I'm a Marine. I just adapt and overcome and just swing from the, shoot from the hip. So. Um, thank you very, very much for attending tonight. Uh, really and truly appreciate it. Thank you. God bless you. Semper Fi. Oh, come on, Marines, make some noise, Marine Corps! All right. Hi, Red O'Loughlin again, United States Navy Captain Retired. I'm here with Sergeant Johnny Gomez. Johnny, you were in Vietnam. Tell me about that. Well, it was a horrible experience. You know, I went in when I was 17 years old. <laughs> I never realized that I was going to wind up in the swamp and <laughs> knee, and, and, uh, knee high to uh, rice in the rice paddies. And when but did you actually arrive in Vietnam? I arrived in there in the, uh, January of 1965. So you were there very early on? Early on, yes. I, was I didn't on. arrive till 71. Uh, no, no, you were a little bit late. <laughs> yeah. a little bit late. And I see you're wearing a flight suit tonight. No, the only reason I'm wearing this is because my, my son brought this back from me from uh, when he was in Iraq. Oh, okay. <laughs> I yeah. tried to put on my uniform, <laughs> but I, I can't put it on anymore. <laughs> I've gained too much weight. I've gained too much weight. When I went into the service, I was 143 pounds. When I came out, I was 163 pounds, but I was solid. You know? I still had a 28, 28 inch waist. I don't have a 28 inch waist anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, fortunately, I could still fit into mine, but I'm not going to go where I was. But you're lucky. You're lucky. No, you know that was, that, that was just crazy. But uh, you learned some some pretty valuable lessons, I guess, as in the active duty and then in the reserve. So six years of your life. Uh, years what was the one or two things that you think really and truly stayed with you as far as really improving your life? Improving my life. I always stayed with the exercise program. I've always exercised. I've always kept it with the physical thing. I, I, of course, I, don't, I can't run no more four or five miles, but I can still run at least a couple of miles. Okay. And I've always kept that physical uh, stamina that they taught me in the military. It, it taught me discipline. It taught me to take care of my feet. You know what? And it's always helped me because now I'm 69 years old and I feel pretty good for my age. Well, we're both 69 years old. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're both 69 we're years old. We're both 69 years old. <laughs> we're both old. <laughs> I still got my hair, though. <laughs> well, Johnny, thanks very much. I appreciate your time. Anytime, man. Anytime. Okay. okay. Semper Fidelis distinguishes the Marine Corps bond from any other. It goes beyond teamwork. It is brotherhood that can always be counted on. It's Latin for always faithful. Semper Fidelis became a Marine Corps model in 1883. He guides Marines to remain faithful to the mission at hand, to each other, to the Corps, and to the country. No matter what, becoming a Marine is a transformation that cannot be undone. And Semper Fidelis is a permanent reminder of that. 
Once made, a Marine will forever live by the ethics and values of the Corps. In addition to Semper Fidelis, the Marine Corps officers also embrace the phrase Duck Duck's Exemplo, which means to lead by example is the motto to officer candidates in OCS. Marine Corps, come on, give me one! Give me one, come on! Let's give a huge round of applause for our fallen brothers who gave all for us to be here today and have freedom. No, I, I'm not having any more birthdays going that way. I'm doing them this way. All right, he's going to stop at 92. You heard it right here. So next year you're still going to get one. 91. Okay, great. Give it up for Sarge Hackney. A lot of people here know him, love him. And he's threatened to whoop my ass once when I called him up on stage, so I don't want to push him anymore. But he joined right after Pearl Harbor. So he's been through, uh-oh. Damn, hey, Sergeant, he's going to whoop my ass. I need some backup. What do we got here? Sergeant, what does that say? I can't. He's an Iwo Jima Marine, right? Yeah. There you go. Turn around for the crowd. That's awesome. This time... This time the Marine will cut the cake and will pass a piece of cake to the oldest Marine. And now he's going to cut another piece of cake and give it to the youngest Marine. Now the oldest Marine and the youngest Marine are going to share the cake and this is the symbolism of passing on the tradition of the Marine Corps from the oldest Marines to the youngest Marines and so on. Let's give a huge round of applause one more time for all the Marines here tonight. Hi, Red Olafo, Navy Captain Retired, one more time. I'm here with the World War II veteran, 92 years old, Sergeant Hackney. That's me. When did you uh, join the um, Marine Corps? November 1941. That was just before December 1941. Did you have a premonition things were happening? No. I had a birthday day, day in November. And you were old enough to join? Barely, yeah. But I was. And where did you end up going in December of 1941? Uh, San Diego. And how long were you there? Uh, boot camp time about uh, I was there about a little over a month and Pearl Harbor's bomb and they sent me out. And where'd they send you to? Uh, the South Pacific. South Pacific? Yeah, I went to Samoan Islands and then I went into uh, Wallace Islands and then I went into the Gilbert Islands and then I went into uh, Philippines and uh, 
back state and uh, in the hospital there for a while they put me through sea school and sent me back over again. What was the hardest island group you had to attack? I, I can What was the hardest island group that battle, what was the hardest battle you had out there in the South Pacific? Gilbert Island. Gilbert Island. Yeah. Why was that so tough? Well, it's, there's uh, uh, Tarawa and, and Apple Mama. And uh, that, that's when they were doing all the bombing and all that kind of stuff up there. And uh, they was uh, having a hard time getting the, uh, what I call the foxes out of the hole, you know. Getting the foxes out of the hole. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. With flamethrowers, they did quite well. That was it. Uh, I, I never say much about any of that. I've never talked much about it, and I forgot probably 90% of it, but I never have forgotten none of that right there. Did you get wounded out there at any time? No. I, very, very few people in that category. I, I had, well, uh, uh, what happened, I think, I got what they call fellow rises. Okay. down there and everything and I end up in Aia Heights Hospital in Honolulu and then when they sent me there they sent me to Oakland to Oak Knoll Hospital and so you weren't injured by combat but you were injured by the fact that you were there yeah I know I, I never got injured that way no okay. no and how long were you in the Marines 26 years 26 years yeah. Uh, I retired uh, July 1967. 1967, that was one year before I joined. I joined in June of 1968. Yeah. And you were a staff sergeant when you retired? Gunny sergeant. Gardening, gunny sergeant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's uh, E7, is that right? Right. Okay. Right. And. What was the what was the best deal the Marine Corps ever gave you? Where did they send you to you enjoyed the most? I, I, I don't understand. What was the best place the Marine Corps ever sent you? West place? Best the, the place? The best place. Yeah. Uh, Fondest memories? Uh, I, I'd say, uh, well, overseas, I don't know. It wasn't the Gilberts? No, 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 no. It wasn't there. And, uh, 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 probably Okinawa at the time was okay. probably the best. And when were you in Okinawa? Uh, 1945, uh, I think it was. Okay, so right at the end of the war. Yeah, right. And Okinawa was a very tough battle. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of people died there uh, in Okinawa. Yeah, well, we, uh, uh, I was seagoing at that time. I, we pulled in a white beach, and they had a Japanese... Uh, destroyer on the beach and you couldn't get up there so we didn't stay there long and we pulled it out yeah. i've read about white beach that's pretty yeah. pretty tough battle yeah yeah, yeah. It's, i'm honored just to be standing yeah. with somebody who was actually there thank you so that that's about uh, my my story that's about it <laughs> well sarge thank you very very much i really appreciate your time yeah, that's right i appreciate it thank you dfc what's your name sir Lance Corporal, you can tell I've been out too long. I'm sorry I didn't see the other. Would you be kind enough to say something to everybody? Well, I'm an Afghan veteran myself. You know, taught my veterans out here. Hoorah, San Fidelis. To anyone willing to join the Corps, it's a great institution and I highly advise it. It's a brotherhood unlike anything else. Semper Fidelis Marines. Hi, Red O'Loughlin, the United States Navy Captain, retired. I'm here with R.J. Vleck, and he is the coordinator for the 240th Marine Corps birthday at Churchill's in Sugarland. R.J., please give us just a short rendition of what tonight's event is all about. Well, I think tonight's event is really, uh, our goal was to honor all veterans of all different branches and the families and what they go through and to give them recognition, as well as them to learn about different resources available where they they might be able to get some help when they need that too so it's a great way to network and to give these people a, a good feeling and this is the sixth year is that correct that's correct sixth year here it just gets bigger every year and you were in the Marine Corps when 
1964, 1968, July, Vietnam, 1966. July. Yeah. What do you remember? July by the sea. I remember leaving December 13th, 1966, what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> and you were just a basic gun carrier, is that right? Yeah, I was actually in the air wing there. But, you know, what my goal is is, is to give back because so many veterans uh, in those days didn't get any recognition or have any resources help. So I just uh, feel like this is God's purpose in my life is to help these veterans, make sure they are appreciated and that there is help available for them in, in any type of issues that they're dealing with. They're never left alone. Our, our saying in the Marine Corps is, we don't leave our wounded on a battlefield. Well, there's a lot of mental battles uh, when they veterans get home these days. Well, now, fortunately, we have all kinds of resources for them and people leave here going, man, I didn't know that was available. And they, uh, you know, it's one of those heart paychecks. You just feel better about it at the end of the night. Where did you join the Marine Corps at? I joined, I was raised in Albuquerque, and I joined the Marine Corps, uh, and we, I went to San Diego. Not many people know I have a twin sister. We joined the Marine Corps together. She was. You an, and your twin sister joined the Marine Corps together? That's right. We made front page of the Albuquerque newspaper, and she was uh, more or less a, a desk person for two years. And uh, I didn't ever see her. I was in four years. And uh, as fortune would have it, she married a Marine she met when she was at El Toro. They're still married to this day. And he's a Marine's Marine. First time I met him, they got married while I was in Ibukuni, Japan. He came over there. And that's the first time I ever met my future brother-in-law. Then we ended up at Chulai, Vietnam together. So it's funny your, how things work. Your brother-in-law and you were in Chulai together? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that amazing? And he flew out. They live in Salt Lake City. He flew out two years ago to come to uh, the, the birthday party here. So, And you got out of the Marine Corps? What? I got out of the Marine Corps in E-4. I was up for E-5, but, uh, you know, if you're a good Marine, you, you almost always have uh, <laughs> some authority <laughs> challenges at times. <laughs> yes, Maggie, there you go. I got out with an honorable discharge, though, Red, and uh, uh, awards. So, And you yeah. are 69, is that right? Yeah. 69 years old, be 70 in February, man. I'll be 70 a few months after you. Yeah, but I see all your postings in your books. He, he eats healthy, I don't. So you can see the difference, <laughs> folks. Buy his books. <laughs> what was the one thing, one or two things, that the Marine Corps taught you that really and truly stuck with you your entire life? I would say, and it's helped me throughout my whole life, is that there's only one way to do it. And there is no gray area. There's a right way to do it, and there's a wrong way to do it. And... Uh, you know, don't take shortcuts. Do it right. Be responsible. And so that's carried me through some real tough times and, and never give up. That's helped me through some tough times, too. So Semper Fi, do or die. That's right. And I want to thank Red for being here tonight and Nick because, uh, you know, one of the things I do, even though it's the Marine Corps birthday, the next day is Veterans Day. So we recognize each branch one at a time. And I think that's another reason this grows in popularity throughout all of Houston. The other reason is we're the only place I've seen that does the full Marine Corps birthday celebration in terms of all the protocol. So, and people leave here like, God, they just experienced something and we didn't know that many people cared or that many services are available to help us through things. How about a quick hurrah to end this thing together? A uh, what? Hurrah. 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 Hi, Captain Red O'Loughlin again, United States Navy retired. Fantastic evening tonight, probably one of the best I've seen in a long, long time. I've been to a number of different veterans events, been to a number of different Marine Corps birthday parties, and tonight was one of the ones that I really and truly enjoyed more than anything else. We had a young lady, woman Marine tonight, who was a member of the police department who did a short keynote address that I thought was outstanding. We had all different uh, military groups honored uh, we had different military organizations honored. I think they, of all the ones I've seen in recent years, I absolutely hands down believe that this is the best one I've been to in a long, long time. Again, the 240th birthday party of the United States Marine Corps, Captain Red O'Loughlin, United States Navy, retired.